it's quite hard to get used to this enjoying watching Newcastle play. West Ham match review. Welcome back to another video of the channel, Newcastle fans. I've just finished watching the West Ham match. I didn't get a chance to go get down there today. Just getting back off, off my jollies last week. I will be at Brentford next week, though. Wow. Um, it is strange to start enjoying watching Newcastle play. I can't remember the last time I said that. And now, when we are going away from home to a team pushing for Champions League, we are giving them a serious fucking run for the money. I've just watched Eddie Howe's interview there on the TV and he is like, you can tell his face when he was asked whether he thought it was a fair result, he's disappointed. He didn't want to say yes because he felt that we should have taken advantage of our dominance in the first half. And I was just so impressed today. So many performances that I want to talk about, individual performances that I thought were great. But collectively, what is refreshing now to see us is when we are not in possession, we are so fucking organised. It's amazing. An organised Newcastle United I'm not going to touch on the last time I saw that too much, because uh, I know his name still co still causes a bit of debate, but I haven't seen that since the Rafa days. Re just in terms of organisation alone, I think Steve Bruce, it all went to shit un under him with regards to us looking solid away from home, but also solid just off the ball. And we, The Eddie Howe effect for me is starting to, starting to slip into place. It really is. Game by game, everyone knows what they're doing. The game plan is in order, but we are confident that we can take the ball and the match to the opposition even when we're away from home in a team pushing for Champions League like I just mentioned and it's so refreshing to see I thought in that first at the first five minutes of the match I said I said to myself when I was watching this isn't a bad start this is exactly how you want to start a game away from home silence the crowd get confident on the ball passing around the back there's no rush at all when you're playing away from home and just slowly build and that's exactly what we did and we were lucky today. Um, I want to say that we were solid defensively all the way through. The only way, time I was disappointed was the goal. It was shit. I'm not going to sit here and say it any other. Um, Dawson was allowed to get away from his mark way too easy. Very simple run through the middle of a couple of Newcastle players, and he was free. The main one of the main danger mans from a set from a set piece, and he was there to bang it in. No challenge at all. So that was disappointing, and that was us. Switching off probably is the only time in the game we switched off and we conceded. And I was pulling my hair out at that point. We'd been totally dominant. Uh, Murphy had had a couple of half shots blocked. We were causing them problems left, right and centre. Um, and I was like, yeah, a goal is coming. A goal is coming. And obviously we conceded. That was disappointing. But hey, we got into the game, back in the game, just in a perfect moment before half time. Probably changed the team talk completely from Eddie when they got in that dressing room. And again, the second half, we didn't start great, but it, it was back and forth the second half. And we had a couple of chances here and there to maybe pinch it ourselves, but we just looked solid. And now we are playing teams, teams much higher than us in the league with no fear. And when was the last time you could say that? You know, we've, we've played on the counter-attack for so many years now when we go to like Man City, Liverpool, your West Ham's. So many teams down that table where we just hit them. We're just hoping that we can keep them out at the back and then hit them on the counter with the likes of Maxim. And now we actually have a game plan. We want to drive at the team. We want to, we want them to drop back a couple of yards and actually sit deeper because we're the ones pushing with the ball. And it's so refreshing. Absolutely so refreshing. I thought Willock's goal was absolutely fantastic. Uh, obviously a massive help by Declan Rice. Um, I did a jokey post on Facebook and Instagram saying... You know, Declan Rice might have flicked it back for him because he wants to join the Saudi revolution. Hi, Amanda. Did you see that little assist I got there for Willock? You know, you're going to sign him in the summer. Who knows? <laughs> uh, who could blame him at the moment? Because if we can manage to stay up this season, I keep repeating it, the world is our fucking oyster. And that's why every game like this is... That was a fantastic point today. Unbeaten since the turn of the year. Man United, Watford, Leeds, Everton, Aston Villa... Now West Ham, Brentford next week in what I would say is a very winnable game for us going into that one. Individual performances today, I think the standout is obviously Joe Willock. Wow, that is the Joe Willock that we loved and saw last season, that we were so happy to get him in permanently in the summer. He was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, everything he did, the, his carrying of the ball is fantastic. We saw it at Leeds. I think Leeds was the turning point for Joe Willock when he really, really put in a shift of carrying the ball forward. 
and it was the same again today. He was just causing them so many problems and he was making them sorts of runs that I've been critical of Joe Willock for not making this season where he's desperate to get in and around that box, that 18-yard box, to get a goal himself. And his goal epitomised that lovely little flick. You know, he had to really improvise to get his toe out and I was so happy to see it go in just for him and let's see whether we get that goal run that we got at the end of the season. Has Bruno affected Willock's performances? Who knows? Maybe. You know, this new kid's up, kid off the blocks come in, Brazilian, big reputation. I need to pull my socks up a little bit now and really show Eddie how what I can do. If that is the case, then fantastic. Long may continue as long as we keep that com competition for places. So he, for me today, epitomised that Newcastle performance. He was brilliant. Um, secondly, for me, maybe not everyone's, but uh, Jacob Murphy. Jacob Murphy was everyone's blur. Him and Kraft today, when we saw the teams, Maximin, who knew that he was injured? Nobody did. Uh, really disappointing to see that and hope it's not too serious. But Jacob Murphy came in as probably his Newcastle's forgotten man today. No one really cared about him on the field. There was no focus on him because he was just a stand-in for Maximin. And I thought he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. He caused them problems. He wanted to run at them. He was unlucky with a couple of shots he got off in the box that got blocked. And defensively, the only thing I'll say for Jacob Murphy that we had today that you don't get with St. Maximin is he grafted on the way back. Maximin will never put the sort of shift in that Jacob Murphy put in today, helping out Matt Target. And I thought he was brilliant. It can't be, it can't be easy coming in knowing that you're only in because of an injury, motivation-wise. You'd like to hope he's thinking, right, it's my chance to impress. And I thought Jacob Murphy proved today that without Maximin, we are OK. Um, so honourable mention for him, without a doubt. Third... One for me, Burn. Oh, he just looks composed. It is a, not very often that you get a lanky defender like Burn, six foot fucking seven, all six foot seven of him, where he's composed on the ball and he looks solid. If he's going up against any striker to win a header or a centre back from a set piece, you're backing him. You really are backing him. I think there was a throw in in the second half from Antonio and Suchek was up against him, a long throw. And I just, I, I wasn't even worried. Suchek was the target and Dan Byrne was always going to tower over the top of him and win that header. And he's just looked fantastic since he's come in. He's passionate because he's a Geordie. He's composed. He's great in the air. And he can play. He can really play with the ball. He likes to bring it forward. And don't forget, he can play left back when required as well. So out, he is one of the reasons for me. Yes, Trippier, we've lost him and it's devastating. But just to see Dan Byrne in that centre-back position. I'm sorry, Lascelles. I know it's heartbreaking for you as captain of the football club to be on the bench, but you are going to be sitting there for a while. Because again, I thought Fabian Shaw was good today as well. I just thought Dan Byrne overshadowed him a little bit and stood out. Fourth mention for me has got to be Matt Target. I thought Matt Target today was fan-fucking-tastic. Crucial interceptions. Great slide tackles. He jockeyed the ball in good areas. He was happy to go forward at every opportunity. And he just looked solid. And I keep saying it. Playing a left back at left back, and we look more we look more solid. Who would have known? Who would have known? Seriously, and I, I know I sound like a stuck wreck over that statement. Matt Target might prove to be one of the best bits of business on a cheeky loan deal that we will we will have for some time. He's cost us now. We might be paying some of his wages, but they won't be high wages. And that is a very very solid bit of business from How Amanda and Co. And he looked great today. Him, Burn, Sharp, fantastic, Craft. Well, you know, he tries. I think we all know Kraft isn't of the quality at full-back. That, you know, he, he, he stands out like a sore thumb in that back four. He's the one with the least quality. He got caught in possession a couple of times. He's not great going forward. He gave away a stupid foul for their goal. But you kind of feel sorry for him. I feel like Kraft's got one of them faces. You look at him and you're like, oh, he's trying. And I wouldn't like to play right back if I was a centre back. It's a totally different position. You've got more pressure on you to get forward, and that's exactly what Kraft's doing. Um, but hey, uh, Joe Linton today, fantastic. I thought him and Declan Rice was a fantastic little uh, match up. I think we both had the moments. I think Declan Rice, in times, I thought, wow, well, he is a player. And you can see why he's getting all the hype. But Joe Linton again, driving that ball forward. The power when he carries the ball is fantastic. And him and Joe Willock carrying that ball out from our own half are really complimenting John Joe Shelby. John Joe Shelby has been better under Howe, but with them two doing all of that work, driving that ball forward, he's able to do what he does best, sit in, spread it about, and keep us ticking over. And I think that's why things in midfield, for me personally, are working so well at the moment. 
Um, Fraser with a fantastic shift. Chris Wood, the goal's going to come. Again, he, he was quiet again. Not really, didn't really do much. He tries, um, he wins balls, but again, I just don't feel like we're playing to his strengths. And I thought Jacob Murphy being in the team today might have been able to whip more crosses in for him. He still hasn't had many crosses of, of true quality where he can really bang one in, uh, or at least hit the target with a header. Um, so I'm sure that'll come. But hey, fantastic result. If you'd have given me a point today, I predicted in my match, um, match preview, I was right again. Maggie the dog, she's not here today. She's getting babysat. But Maggie the dog and me predicted a one-all draw and it came in. Never when you put a bet on it. But it's a fantastic result. Going into Brentford, which is a different kettle of fish to West Ham. Brentford is a game where we are going to have a lot more chances. And if we can go to West Ham and play like we've just done there against a team really high up in the league who are having a fantastic season, why can't we go to Brentford next week and get a win? Five points above that relegation zone we are now. I've got the Norwich game on now. They're, they're away to Liverpool. Burnley have just taken the lead, unfortunately, but we'll see how that one goes. And we are looking the best out of that four at the moment, and that's the most important thing. And the fact that we lost Trippier, to, obviously through injury, we lost Maximin, two huge, huge players for us, and we've still put in the sort of shift we did today. That's one of the things I'm over the moon about. And the Eddie Howe effect is in full flow now, and long may it continue. The players are getting momentum. Bruno's barely kicked the ball. Trippy is to come back later in the season. Callum Wilson sitting in the sidelines. Maximin sitting in the sidelines now. I'm happy. I'm going to enjoy my weekend as a Newcastle fan. Have a few beers and just feel happy that we are enjoying watching Newcastle United play. And I cannot wait to get on that party bus to Brentford next Saturday. Um, if you're new to the channel, Newcastle fans, drop us a like. Drop us a subscribe. Get us on Facebook and Instagram. Lots of funny content getting churned out there every, every day, if I do say so myself. And yeah... Happy Saturday, Newcastle fans. Go and enjoy your weekend. Get the beers down your neck. Get the Jager bombs down your neck. Oh, how many games is that unbeaten now? Five games unbeaten? Under how long may that continue? The Saudi How Revolution is well underway. How are the lads? <laughs>